Jarvis, how many Avengers movies have there been? There have been four movies in the Avengers series since the first one came out in 2012. The next movie... Eliza, who coined the term artificial intelligence? From Avanglish.com. The term artificial intelligence was coined by Stanford. We're going to build an offline wake word detection engine using a Raspberry Pi. And once the Pi hears the wake word, it's going to fire a solenoid that's going to push the physical alert button that's present on almost every Alexa device. And once Alexa is active, it's going to listen to and process our request. So look at the shopping list for this video, look at the parts, and we're going to just jump right in and get started. Let's set up our Raspberry Pi. In my case, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 02W. It's nice because they're about $15 and they have the processing power necessary for this project. I'm not going to go into great, you know, gritty details here because there are tons of tutorials about setting up uh, Raspberry Pis on the web right now. So I'm going to go through this, the generic parts here a little bit quickly. For starters, what you're going to need to do is set up an SD card with an OS for the Pi. So I'm going to go to raspberrypi.com download the Pi Imager for Windows, and then I'm going to run it. I've launched the installer. I'm going to pick the device I'm using. Again, the Pi 02W for the operating system. We don't need a full desktop environment because this device is going to run headless. So I'm going to come here and select an install that has no desktop environment. I've got my SD card installed. And now just to make life a little easier, I'm going to edit some of the settings. For example, I'm going to set the username and password. I'm going to set up my wireless LAN. And also very important, I'm going to enable SSH so I can connect to this remotely. And now we're going to go ahead and apply the settings and write to the SD card. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi settings that I put in on the uh, Pi OS installer, they weren't picked up when I put the SD card into the Pi and turned it on. So what that means is I had to hook a US keyboard, USB keyboard up to the Pi and an HDMI monitor and start it up, log in, and now I'm basically going to run sudo raspy config and come into configure system options, SSID and passphrase. I'll put in my network ID and the password. And now that we're reconnected here, let me just finish. And now if I hit IF config, we can see here the, I, the address of the Pi, the IP address of the Pi now that it's on our local network. Now I'm going to connect to the Pi from my Windows desktop. I'm using a program called Putty. I've put in the IP address here. The port should be 22 and I am going to open a session. We're going to be using some Python libraries including the PV Porcupine, a wake word detection engine from a company called Pico Voice. But before we can use pip3 to install PV Porcupine, we need to install pip3. So we will type And now that that's installed, we can install Porcupine. To detect audio from the microphone, we're also going to need the PV recorder package. So let's install that. Now things are going to get fun. Uh, we're going to set up our custom wake words, so we're going to go to the Pico Voice console, console.picovoice.ai, and create an account if you don't have one already, or just sign in. And you are allowed, I believe, to make two custom wake words a month. There is some, there is some restriction here, but um, anyway. You'll have uh, your own access key up here, which you want to keep secret. That's why I blanked it out in the video. 
and you want to click the button down here for create wake word. Pick the appropriate language and enter the word. So for example, I'm going to do Jarvis. And now we're going to test it out. Jarvis. 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 That looks great. And now we want to download it. And we want to download it for the uh, Raspberry Pi. So for that custom wake word file you just downloaded, it'll be a zip file, but inside will be a PPN file. You want to take that file, put it in a directory on your local computer you know, where you know where it is. And then from my site, links in the description, you're going to want to download this custom wake.py file. And let's look at that. So in this file, first you're going to have your access key from the site. I've blacked mine out on the video, but yours was displayed at the top of the, uh, the console that we were just on for Pico Voice. In the keyword paths, you're going to put the name of that PPN file that you downloaded with the extension. And in this next line, this handle line right here, you are going to have this sensitivity value. It's like an accuracy value. You can adjust this if you're finding that the device isn't recognizing your name. You can you know, make it higher or lower. I find 0.6 works well for me. Uh, by the way, there are built-in pre-trained wake words. Funny enough, Jarvis is, is one of them. So if you want to use one of the pre-trained words, you can skip training it and you can just comment it out and use this line here this instead. And here's the list of pre-trained wake words that you can use. And you'll also note here that um, I just have a little debug print statements in here for now, listening when the script runs so that we know it's working. And then we'll print out a little message when it says that it's heard the wake word. What's with this LED line here and on and off? We'll get to that in, uh, uh, in just a few minutes. One other thing I wanted to mention is it is possible to train or to have multiple wake words. If that's the case, you can just add them here to this list, comma delimited. And also you have a separate sensitivity to add for each specific wake word. So that's just something to keep in mind if you want to train multiple wake words. Also, if you're training a non-English wake word, it's beyond the scope really of these instructions, but there are some additional steps that you need to take. And finally, I'll mention that the words, the wake words you can train have to be in the sort of the corpus, the lexis of, um, the lexicon rather, of words that Pico Voice has been trained on, which is very extensive. But um, if it's a non-English word, like when I trained uh, doctor, my Dr. Theopolis replica, uh, it, the word Theopolis was not in its dictionary. So you can be clever and spell it phonetically. Uh, so I did the underscore opolis. It had both of those words, and so now it understands when I say Theopolis. So if you can't, if you, if it's not a normal English word, maybe you can spell it phonetically and it will still work. We're going to use another great free program here, WinSCP, to transfer the files from our local computer over to the Pi. So I've opened it up here. I've already set up a profile for my Raspberry Pi with the IP address, my ID, and my password. I'm going to hit log in. And by default, it takes me to my home directory, and that's fine. This is the remote session here on the Pi on the right. This is my local directory where I've got my Python program and my wake word file here. So I'm just going to take these, drag them over here, and now they're over there on the Pi, and we can close this connection. Now the fun begins. So I've taken my Raspberry Pi, and I've plugged in a simple USB microphone. Now, in my case, I got lucky. It's a very simple mic. It was auto-detected correctly, so no additional steps were necessary. Um, again, if this next step doesn't work for you, you may need to look for some additional videos on setting up a microphone on the Raspberry Pi or the specific device you are using. So I've signed in here. Uh, let's just look there. The two files in my home directory, the Python script and the, uh, the keyword script. And so I am going to run the script now. And you'll see that it says listening as we from our debug statement there. And let's try this out. Now, it's actually um, all the way on the other side of the room, but let's see how this works. Jarvis. 
great. Jarvis. 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 Okay, so this is working really well. And now we can move on from the Raspberry Pi uh, software side of things to the next steps, which will be related to the circuit that we're going to need to build to drive this and the 3D print. Oh, there's one other important step, lest I forget. You don't want to actually have to log into your Pi every time and, and, you know, and sign in and start up the script. So we want that to happen automatically when the Pi is switched on. So I've remoted back in and signed into the Pi here, and there are two changes I need to make. First, I need to add a script to my local .bash RC file. So as soon as I log in, I'm in my home directory. So you should be able to type this command exactly and load this file up. And this is going to load the simple nano editor on the Pi. And you will see here at the bottom, I've added this line here. Python 3, home, mic, obviously that would be your login name, and then the customwake.py script. So save and exit that. Then also you need to set your Pi to auto login. So for that, we want to go into the Raspi config utility. And under system options, we want to go down to boot auto login, and we want to select auto login, automatically logged in as the, again, in my case, mic user. And it'll ask if I want to reboot uh, when I hit finish here. When I do, it will automatically reboot and run that script on startup. Let's look at the circuit that drives the relay from the Pi Zero. Here's the first time we're looking at the uh, Pi Zero. And you'll see here the little uh, tiny USB microphone that I have attached via a little tiny USB adapter. And um, let's see here. So, oh, we're powering it from two 9-volt batteries. The, you're powering a 5-volt relay from two 9-volt batteries? What were you thinking, Mike? 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Well, the, what I was thinking is that the 5 volts uh, 3-amp power supply that works for the Pi, it'll fire the relay, but not strong enough to push the button on the Alexa. So that's why we're, it's only for 0.3 seconds. It'll be fine. And you can find, uh, don't worry about, you know, pausing it and looking at what I've done here. I'll put a picture to this sketch uh, or to this um, schematic on my site. And you can also find tons of resources online for driving a, a solenoid or a linear actuator uh, if you want from a, uh, a Pi. Usually you'll find it for an Arduino, but it's very easy to adapt to a Pi. And, um, you know, so a little diode here for protection uh, of the board. And yeah, that's basically it. Make sure we, uh, you know, you're going to wire up this little connector to hook up the relay, but that's all there is to it. Mike from the future here. Those two 9-volt batteries, not a great idea. A lot of current wants to rush into the electromagnet on the solenoid, so I found I needed a more stable power supply. I had a 12-volt, 2-amp power supply laying around that I used. Uh, I'll try and find just a, uh, a cheap generic version on Amazon and link to it in the description. Okay, now it's time to put it all together. We're in the home stretch. So at this point, hopefully you've printed out the correct uh, holder for your model dot. Amazingly, I have owned all the different models, I realize, since the very first, uh, you know, Pringles can sized one. So uh, let's just demonstrate here. You've got your 5-volt relay. And this basically, the cable snakes through. We push the relay in here. Just push it in there. Just test it to make sure that it's not hung up on any filament, extra, you know, filament from your, from your printer that you got a nice clean print. So that's working. And then put in your Echo Dot. Now, um, the relay is going to make a little click sound when it hits the button. I put a little tiny piece of felt on the top there. But basically, you want to slide this in to the holder. Make sure that the relay is pushing down on that, on that button in the right spot. Plug it in. Then connect the Pi circuit that you built to the relay, to the holder. And you're finished. Plug in the Pi and give it a try. Hey, R2. Who shot first? Han shot first in the original version of Star Wars Episode 4. 
Theopolis. How many actors have played Buck Rogers? Actors who have played Buck Rogers include Gil Gerard in Buck Rogers in the 25th century, Buster Crabbe in Buck Rogers, and David Hasselhoff in Robot Chicken. Wow. Buster Crabbe gets second billing. I wouldn't have expected that. Okay, in this section, I'm going to show you how to take the design we've previously used and integrate it into your own projects. This is the inside of Dr. Theopolis. Forgive the copious amounts of green tape. Uh, so here's our pie. Here's a little extension cable with the same microphone that I'm using in the other demo. Um, here's an Arduino and another little device to basically control the lighting effects. And here is a dissected Echo Dot. And this little thing, if you can see it right here, is a very simple relay. Now, what happens when you push the button uh, on an Echo? Well, obviously, it makes contact inside. The, you know, the, the button presses down two contacts. If you dissect uh, a dot, what you can do is find where those two points are and solder a few wires to them. And it's going to vary depending on which version of the dot you're uh, you know, dissecting. And I've actually even got it covered up here. But you want to find those two contact points, solder two wires to them, and solder the two wires to part of your relay. And the two wires that supply the voltage to the relay, and now you can use just the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. You do not need to use um, you know, the two 9 volt batteries as I am. But basically, when that pin turns on, it's going to close the relay and essentially simulate the contact press of that button. So you do that for half a second, a third of a second, and this little thing is so quiet and tiny you won't hear it at all, but that's a way to more quietly uh, simulate the button push. And also for Dr. Theopolis, I've soldered some wires on here to tap into the speaker contacts, and again, that's how I feed into the display of the lights on his face. Okay, let me wrap up with a few random things I forgot to cover. First, if you like this video, please subscribe, ring the bell, uh, please leave your comments. I'm finally starting to document a lot of the interesting projects that I've worked on. So if you found this interesting and you want to see some more things like this, I'd really appreciate the subscription. Second, I realize I never mentioned that, uh, that lead on, lead off line of code in the script. You might have guessed by now, but basically what that does is it sends over pin 23, or the appropriate pin. Make sure you look at the Pi wiring diagram if you're going to wire it slightly differently. But anyway, it sends a five, voltage, 5 volts over that pin, which will then basically, that's what actually triggers the relay coming on for the, you know, the half second or third of the second that we're using. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is many people don't realize you can select one of, I think, six or seven different voices for your dot. So if you are going, so, so try and choose a voice that's appropriate or kind of matches the wake word that you're using. For example, I picked the uh, male voice for my Dr. Theopolis replica. You might want to pick uh, one with a British accent if you're using Jarvis. Uh, but there are other voices to choose from. So again, just have some fun and play around with it. Thanks very much for watching this video and happy making. I'll see you next time.